rising fight back from Swinton. There were some interesting video ref calls that certainly got Swinton, got the Swinton fans that I was sitting with agitated. The try with the foot in certainly looked like a knock-on from the poor view you get on the video screen. Mitchell Dart says, in another five minutes, and Swinton, with the late momentum, probably get the win. Atkin has an interesting kicking game, some really good kicks at times, but one particular in the first half, on the fifth, he deliberately kicks it dead. Reaction of the coach mirrored mine. A tad bizarre option so early in the game. Uh, yeah, Lee Randall said... Swinton edged the first half, but really didn't show up for 25 minutes off the peg. Second half, left it too late in the end to get anything from the game. Oh, there you go. That was that was really it. I mean, Sheffield had a burst of try scoring sort of the second half of the first half. Mm. And whilst there were some legitimate tries in there, um, either coming off the back of Swinton mistakes or through good play, credit where it's due, there was also at least two tries that were no way... Like, for me, tries, I don't know. Obviously, I've not seen them back properly. No. And, I'm, and I didn't have a great, I had an even worse view of the video screen, replay screen than Brian Davies had. But, for me, all, all day, he lost control of the ball and never properly regathered on the one where there was a bit of a scramble under the post. And I can't remember if the double, there was a double movement one as well, and I can't now remember if it was <laughs> given or not, but I think it was, there was some incredulous stuff that happened, but Sheffield were probably good enough for like the first 50 minutes of the game, mm. despite going behind early, um, to be the better side. Swinton, it's just unfortunate that those decisions went against them and they kicked into gear so late, because in the last seven minutes or so, they really they were ripping wrapped up, up they? the score, yeah. Uh, second game of the second day then saw Halifax lose out 22 points to 32 against Toulouse Olympique. Yeah, Brian Davies said, Toulouse looked a class above facts and decent goal kicking would have made this more comfortable. Having said that, Rob Warrensy <sighs> seemed to get through the first line of defence every time he had the ball. Of the two sides, Toulouse looked the side most likely to be able to cause some problems in the middle eight. Yeah, the other thing to say about Rob Warrensy is that he is an absolute liability defensively though. <laughs> the Hod- the Hod- Halifax fans were giving him some right. Yeah. Shots, weren't they? Yes, yes, they were. Aiden Stocker said to lose with the side I was looking forward to seeing most over the weekend, and clearly they didn't disappoint. Love the way they threw the ball around with gay abandon as only the French can. They seem to embrace the big occasion while Halifax seemed to let it get to them. A few of the Toulouse players looked super league level. Mitchell Dart said Toulouse definitely looked a level above. Goal kicking misses makes the score look closer than how it looked on field. Plenty of errors from both at times was looking forward to the Cunnyminga show but it was Tony Morell that stole it pretty standard winger try it seems nowadays yeah. he got just after half time but it was still brilliant French million pound game is a real chance now oh yeah uh, Lee Randall said after missing out on seeing Toulouse last season with the all goals I was looking forward to watching Toulouse play and they didn't disappoint a big pack with quality off the edges could upset a few in the qualifiers yeah Lee had booked a uh, Transport and travel and all of all of that that goes along with it to go and see the all goals play against Toulouse, thinking, oh, they've got Lee in the first round of the cup, so they're not going to win that. Yeah. Um, so, so I'll just uh, schedule my plans now. But obviously, in the end, they did win through. So, um, yeah. and I think then they were drawn away in the cup. Mm. So he, he he just had a nice weekend in Toulouse, really. Yeah, well, that's nice. You can explore a new city, can't so, you? So you saw the first half of this one, didn't you? It was all the action. Yeah, it was all Toulouse. Toulouse. It was all Toulouse. Um, um, really, Halifax as a as a team seem to mirror their fans in in a lot of ways. In that, when things are going well and things are coming off, they're all together and they were working hard for one another. But when they came up against it a little bit, they all seem to turn on each other and just try to do things individually. Um, oh, at half time in the toilets, there was some really yeah. ludicrous comments from the, but the play- Halifax fans. But they care and they've got a good, yeah. a decent fan base. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm not criticising that. Yeah. The, the point I was trying to make is that at times Halifax attacking, you know, they looked like they could achieve something and it looked like they might be a match for Toulouse, but they weren't able to match occasional parts of the game where they all got together and worked hard with the, with the individual errors that they were making and, and they made too many of them and for every 60 metres Rob Warrensy makes with ball and you know handing off a couple of players and, and darting through he gives away he, he drops crap balls under pressure and, and, and puts his teammates all in the shit so 
that's kind of that was he was the microcosm of, of the entire Halifax team for me. I would point the finger more at the halves. I think the and their ends to set yeah. were were awful and honestly some of the kicks in attacking positions were the worst I've seen um at the championship level even mm. all year and the you know from the games we've seen and the bits we've seen. Yeah. I just think and Scott Morell's a good player. He's been around the block, but mm. yeah, did not have a, a good bit of a man. did not have a good game in this one. Mm. For me to lose, we're we're far and away better than Halifax in this game, and the Halifax fans won't like to hear that, and they'll just say it's all Big Nigel's fault because he wants to have all expenses paid, holidays to places. But no, in all seriousness, the right, better yeah. team yeah. won, Definitely. and by not as much as they deserve to probably in really. There you go. And the final game of the Bash did me no favours as a Bulls fan. Dewsbury recorded their third win of the season and of the season over Batley with a 13 points to 12 victory over t- Bulldogs. See, I'm not sure I agree with that point you just made about not doing you any favours as a Bulls fan. And all the Bulls fans were cheering on Batley and all that, but surely... Swinton losing helps us avoid... Surely it's Batley winning, so making another team be further away from any potential of you catching them up. Because hmm. now I would imagine Batley are uncatchable for you. Uh, but sorry, if Batley had a won... They'd have been uncatchable. They'd have been uncatchable Possibly for you. so. Yeah, maybe it's a bit more of an equaliser. But either way, mm. um, it doesn't matter. But it was a heavy one in Derby and there was a drop goal in it. Yeah, um, Lee Randall said, and the last game of the Summer Bash 2017, it was definitely the worst <laughs> game of the lot. If they could have completed back-to-back sets without dropping the ball, it might have made a more enjoyable game. Still, I enjoyed my time at the Summer Bash and will be booking tickets for next year. Fingers crossed the all goals can get to the League One Shield final for another meetup. Absolutely. Yeah, to be honest, me, Lee and... Callie was done. She she wanted to. She was her, her mind was already back at na, back, back, back at Nan and Granddad's. Yeah, I think. yeah. And Phil and me and Lee were just honestly laughing, genuine lols at some <laughs> of the <laughs> some shitness. Because leave aside, I mean, Batley were definitely the better team. Mm. Um, Ask goes to show that they scored three tries and Dewsbury scored one, mm. but they just constantly gave the ball back to the Rams mm. who then didn't want to accept these gifts um, they accepted the gifts of the right. penalties when they came along but yeah like they gave them a chance with uh, Bram Barney you know spend more time off the pitch than on it at the moment getting his simbin in and still nothing they couldn't do nothing no. so the, the first drop goal attempt that was from the other half, because it wasn't from Sykes who kicked the drop goal that won it for Dewsbury. Honestly, it went through, so you picture the stand Mm -hmm. where we are, and he was a little bit to the right of the stick, so he had to put a bit of angle on it, but the ball went out through the the third tunnel along. So, you know, there's three exits in the middle of Bloomfield Road stands, Mm -hmm. and it it landed in the furthest (laughs) exit away from where he kicked it. (laughs) I could kid you not. Oh, that's incredible. (laughs) It's not incredible, it's horrific. And then... But we were like having a go at that saying, can it get any worse? Then from like two minutes later, there was a goal line dropout going straight to the man, mm. puts his foot out and misses it straight at him. <laughs> it was just... Just comedy then, It was it? like that throughout and it, it, was, it was a tough watch, but the fact that I suppose it was close and there was people around that cared because yeah. the Bradford fans were getting quite agitated as well as the, 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 the Batley ones the Batley Batley fans. Fans and the Jewsbury ones down the sideline. That you know, it gave a little bit of a finish with it, but it was it quality wise by far the worst Fair enough. of the weekend. So an odd way to end the weekend, but what does all that mean in terms of the championship then Mark? Rovers now have a six point lead at the top with Toulouse, London and Featherston all on twenty two points. Just two points ahead of fifth place. Facts. Dewsbury make round on Swinton, down the bottom end, Bradford remain on minus points. Okay, round 12 of the NRL kicked off over the weekend, a truncated round as we look ahead to Origin. The South Sydney Rabbitohs lost at home 16 points to 22 against the Parramatta Eels. Yeah, Sam Burgess 158 metres, George Burgess 105 metres, Tom Burgess also started, uh, all, but all three Burgesses started, but it wasn't enough for the... Rabbits. There you go. The New Zealand Warriors were 28 points to 10 winners over the Brisbane Broncos. Uh, my Shark, he's got a 9 points to 8 victory over the Canterbury Bankstown Bulldogs. Yeah, James Graham went off injured after about 20 minutes of this one, and that right. was um, 
put pay to the bulldog. And do you know what? Me and Cass sat and watched this on Sunday morning. It was it was an awful game. Right. It really was. Oh, I'm still looking for the Sharkies, I'll take that. And final game in the NRL saw the Canberra Raiders defeat the Sydney Roosters 24 points to 16. Yeah, Hodgson and Whitehead both played, didn't have um, huge roles, but the Raiders managed to seal a win late on in this one. There you go. Okay, that is the world of Rugby League well and truly covered. All that remains for us to do is to bring you our, well not all that remains for us to do, but we're going to look ahead now to round 17 of Super League. Okay, so as we look ahead to round 17 of Super League, play starts on Friday night down at Headingley. It's a replay of one of the big games from the Middle Eights. Mark Leeds take on the Lee Centurions, and I'm finding it very, very hard to look past the Rhinos, not to be able to get back into winning ways, to be honest. I don't think it was a great result for them playing Witness, but um, Lee are just pretty woeful, and I think just get out errored and, and out penalties so 30 points to 20 12 in favour of the Leeds Rhinos yeah at Heading Lee it's very rare that Leeds fall on the wrong side of the error in the penalty count exactly and Lee don't defend well enough around those those issues yeah, wherever they play it's very rare that Lee fall on the right side of it yeah so 38 14 for me for, for the Rhinos fantastic ok Hull FC take on your Wigan Warriors on Sky at 5 o'clock on Saturday afternoon Look, neither side will be happy after last weekend's performances, but I'm going to go with the home team to patch themselves up and have just enough to beat out a disseminated Wigan side. Well, Hull are missing they you know, are. half a team. Well, Rich would tell you that they're going through a real injury crisis. Well, and suspension, potentially. That's true. Uh, 24-20 in favour of, of Wigan. I feel like we don't have the Jenga piece issue so much, because yeah. uh, although we do have... <laughs> you're, you're playing tiddlywinks. <laughs> Yeah, or well we do have one when Lockers go yeah. off the pitch, but I think we'll, have, I think we'll have had a, a week or a few days at least mm-hmm. to, to sort something else around, something out around that, and we'll see how we go. True. Uh, Huddersfield take on Warrington, and honestly, this was a tough one for me to pick because I can see both teams contriving of ways not to win this one. Uh, so I've gone with the home. Team Warrington have just been atrocious of late and Huddersfield have, while they've lost a couple of games, they've been knocking on the doors, I'm thinking of the game against Wakefield in particular, Um, you know, they were close in that one and they just got overwhelmed by Wakefield near the end, so I wonder if they're going to have enough at home um, against Warrington, so I'm going to go with a close one, 19 points to 18 in favour of the Giants. I think it should be fairly exciting high scoring, one thing Huddersfield do is give you chances and one thing... Warrington do is make chances mm. I just think they need to take a few um, and they'll be able to edge out so I'm going to go 28-20 in favour of Wire there you go ok witness on Sunday afternoon take on the Catalan Dragons down at the Select Security and I'm backing them for a second consecutive victory mark as much as Catalan Dragons we think might be targeting wins at home I suspect they're not going to really be up for this travel and witness will be buoyed by the result that they had over the Leeds Rider so let's give them two in a row come on you Chemex yeah I'm going the same way um, your score 28 oh, sorry 24-18 I'm 26-20 so very similar mm. and for the very similar reasons yeah there you go Salford take on Wakefield and actually this is another tough one to tip and I'm just just pipping Salford. I'm just giving Salford it based on on the home field advantage again. Two strong packs that play very dominant rugby league. Uh, two sets of backs that get the balls, or two sets of halves that get the balls out wide to an attractive set of backs. There should be points of plenty in this one and some really classy rugby league being played. So I'm going to go 30 points to 28 in favour of the Red Devils. Um, I think Salford will be a little bit better than Wakefield. Um... I think the forward battle will be interesting, but um, I, I, I just think everything's working even better for Salford than it is for Wakefield. Yeah. So with them being at home and with them being scoring so many points recently, mm. you know Wakefield have done good. Yeah. Salford have done better. Yeah, exactly. Thirty-two <laughs> uh, twenty-two in favour of the Red Devils for me. Fantastic final game of the weekend. Seas top of the table. Castleford take on resurgent under Justin Holbrook. Saint Helens look as good as Saint Helens have been in terms of getting that close win over you in the derby, and then having had a week off. 
or a few days extra off, I should say, with the postponement. Castleford just seems to be one of these teams that the more they play and the more regular they get out on the field, the role just seems to continue for them. And again, they're not really getting hit by injuries. So, as good as St. Helens are, starting to look in terms of some attitude stuff, I just think...